Hey y'all, welcome back to the Oasis Podcast. How y'all doing? <sighs> yeah, it's a deep exhale because today <laughs> is part two of the home buying process. And as you all can see, the title is The Saga Continues because it does. <laughs> oh, but before I get to that, it's a few weeks into the new year and I'm already over this year, y'all. I'm already over it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't even want to do over. I just, I don't know what I want, honestly. I just, I'm just already over it. I'm tired already. Um, if you all listened to previous episode that I did with Vision, we talked about the new year. And my new year typically doesn't start until February. So not February just yet, even though when you guys hear this, it may be February, it may be a little later. Um, but... I'm just not there mentally, y'all. I'm just not there mentally. I don't know if that's supposed to be an emotional connection to New Year, but I ain't there either. I'm just, right now, I just feel like I'm going through the motions right now. It's not really purposeful. And maybe that's why my outlook is a little bit bleak, blah, whatever you want to name it right now. But I hope you all are doing better than me. (laughs) Hope you all are doing well. Um, knocking out some of those goals already um keeping up with those goals keeping up with those things that you wanted for the new year so i recently if you go on the oasis podcast instagram page i recently posted or well i posted a um i posted my 2019 vision board versus my 2020 vision board and i thought you know like Doing that, doing the vision board, completing it will help me kind of get kind of like a handle on getting things done for the new year. And I mean, granted, I'm sure no one took like a soup, like a microscope to it or a magnifying glass to it to kind of see what the goals were. But it was a huge thing for my 2019 to find a home. In my 2020, it's like it's on there, but it's like a small, like little portion of it that says home and again that could probably mean a lot of things because that's really where my brain is right now about this home buying process it's like it's a goal I definitely want to accomplish but it's not for the faint of heart (laughs) it's not for the weak and it took a lot of energy out of me for 2019 and I literally focused everything into that like literally I wasn't as social as I typically am or rather want to be and that had to do with you know saving money and making sure that you know my credit was good and just pretty much making sure that all my energy was going towards this home buying process because it really did need all my energy I took trips but not as much as I typically would take because and also because yeah going out Um, And looking at homes took time. So I had to make sure like I was available for those weekends and or whatever days that, you know, we were going out looking for places and also making sure if we did find a place, if we put an offer in, like, okay, not planning anything too, you know, too soon because, you know, you have to do inspection and you have to do that just to make sure I was available so that if anything popped up that I would be there. And so that made me not really plan a lot of things towards the especially towards the latter half of the year and I and I'm not doing that this year nope I'm not doing it like I am going to live my life (laughs) and home buying is going to be secondary to that Um, my goal this year is to find my joy and that's powerful for me because I feel like I've been moving not from a place of joy. It's been from a place of, you know, getting things done, from a place of checking off boxes. And not that I'm unhappy because I think there's a difference between being happy and knowing joy. For me, I am happy. I'm content with life. Like, I don't really have a yearning for anything major, if that makes sense. So, and I'm not unhappy because I know what unhappiness feels like and I'm definitely not that. I 
just do feel like I want to feel something more. I want to feel joy. I want to, and to me, joy looks like, and it should feel like for me, I guess I'm explaining it, um, what it looks like. And at the same time, what it looks like is also how I think it should feel. And that should feel like a little kid getting that thing they always wanted or a little kid getting some ice cream, you know, after a hot day. And that look on their face, how excited they are, how happy. I want to be like that the, like every day. And I know that's a huge task, but I think that's accomplishable. And I really think that it's a matter of me changing my perspective and how I think about things. And so I'm taking steps to to find that joy. And I know that I find joy in traveling, so I'm definitely doing that. I find joy in going to shows, so I'm doing that. I find joy in going to concerts, so I'm doing that. I find joy in spending time with certain people because I can grow from them, we can laugh. And just just being social with certain people, of course, it brings me joy. And I'm like, I'm doing all that. Any way that I know I can bring joy to myself, I'm doing it. And home buying does not bring me joy. <laughs> And I'm just like, you know what? It is a priority though, but it's not, it's not going to be in the forefront for me this year. And yeah. And I know my boyfriend isn't happy about that. Like he kind of is, is picking up on that and he doesn't want me to let go of the goal. And I mean, granted, we're still getting to know each other. So he, he doesn't know that about me because I know a lot of people, they'll, you know, try to accomplish something they can't do it they just put it to the side and then they're like forget it and they never do it I'm not built like that and I think he thinks that might be the case and I'm nowhere near built like that I if I have something that I need to do trust is gonna get done unless I completely scratch it off at something I don't want anymore but if I still want it it's gonna get done but it's just not gonna be a priority for me and I'm gonna give you all the rundown of how I got to this point and essentially I so I think the last episode, I can't remember 100%. I feel like it was in November or early December. I can't remember. Or in December sometime where I talked about, you know, um, finding a place and kind of going through that process, waiting for an appraisal. So y'all, <laughs> okay. So appraisal came in and this house is a whole hundred thousand dollars less valued less than they're trying to sell it for right and for those of us who may know um that's a hell to the all and those of us who don't know so a seller an owner can list their house for as much money as they would like a million dollars if they want to like whatever three six million doesn't matter right However, if you are getting bank funding, meaning you don't just have a million dollars just hanging around, right, to pay them, you have to go through a process. And part of that process is getting an inspection to kind of, um, not kind of, to look over the house, make sure there's no issues in the foundation, leaks, roof, appliances, all that, you know, to make sure that, to you know, to see the, the status or um, where the house, uh, not where the house, but the status of the house, essentially. That report then goes to the bank and an appraisal, appraisal happens and they send someone else out. They look at, you know, all that stuff that was put in an appraisal. They kind of second check it in a way. I mean, in the, excuse me, the inspection, they'll second check it, but then they also do an extra piece where they do, um, comps, which is essentially comparable sales. So they look at houses that are similar to the one that you're buying in regards to, to square footage, in regards to rooms, bathrooms, etc., to see how much those houses sold for recently. And that's how they come up with a number. And so the house I was buying came up to a whole hundred thousand dollars less than what the owner was trying to sell it for. Now, a bank is not going to be okay with giving you an extra hundred K for a house because essentially, and then you shouldn't be okay with it either. Unless you're like, yo, this is my dream house and you want to take that L, I say by all means go for it, but I ain't about that life. And what that essentially means is, so when you have a home, and again, I'm not an expert, but this is from my understanding. You want essentially to buy a house 
where you not necessarily getting it for a steal, but you want a house that has equity already, meaning that it has some value to it without you even being on the property, without you having to make any um, renovations or anything of that nature. Equity is just essentially money that the house has accumulated on its own. If you are paying someone 50K, 100K more than what the house is worth, you're literally giving away money. Because now there's a time span that you have to sit on a house and be in a house, whatever the case is, for now to rebuild back that money you essentially lost. Because that's a loss at that point. And that doesn't make sense. Me, I I operate from a very logical place. And I'm not giving away money just to say, oh, I own a home. I'm not pressed to move. I'm not pressed to be in a house it's really just a goal of mine that i want to accomplish was i've had it on my to-do list for three years and i wasn't willing to do that and so the seller wasn't willing to negotiate either so instead of like okay fine not the whole 100k but they they wasn't budgeting from 80 more are you dumb are you dumb no goodbye sir like um and so that's what happened i walked away from the deal and I have no regrets whatsoever. So that's that. That was in December. <laughs> that was a huge bummer. Um, I really, it was a bummer. Even though I know it was the best thing to do, it was kind of like, damn, I was revving up for that whole experience, revving up to move and like get this done with so I can go to the next phase of life. And it didn't happen. And that really freaking sucks. Not only that but you have to shell out your own money for an inspection and ugh, that shit ain't cheap <laughs> and so I really just shelled out x amount of hundred dollars for nothing essentially and that also fucking sucks because that's money that you're not going to get back and that is the risk also that you take when you're going through the process and so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to quit. You know, I just shook it off. It was like, all right, let's keep going. So go back out there, you know, find, you know, keep looking. And it took, yeah, it took a little while. It's like, oh, I didn't really care for anything. And then, but also from the, the lesson learned, I was more intentful. One, with the type of properties that I actually you know, went ahead and make like to look at, but also when I found something that I liked, I had my realtor do some legwork and that included, you know what, talk to the realtor, to the seller's real realtor, find out what the deal is, right? Like if my, if my realtor and I felt that the house was more expensive than it should be, you know, we acknowledged that we're like, okay, this is more expensive. I said, okay, cool. We know this. We know it's not going to appraise for the further amount that they're asking for. No problem. Now, are they aware of that, right? So having him talk to the seller's realtor, hearing kind of what the realtor feels and what they think, kind of what page the owner is on, if they're willing to negotiate or not, you know, what where they stand. So, you know, that helped kind of not waste time, essentially, for a few homes that I did find that I was like, oh, I, I think I'm gonna like this because when you when we did the the extra legwork, it was like, oh no, okay, they on some bullshit, oh no, you know whatever the case is, like, right, you know what, it's not worth it, no problem, let's move on. So let's fast forward, and then fast forward to recently, we find two places actually, um, place A and place B. Place A, beautiful, beautiful in a great area. Oh my gosh, so much land, so much room, just beautiful home it's a home that you can see yourself being in for a little while see yourself raising kids in it's beautiful home like boom all right we need to jump on this let's do this and then home b was oh this is also nice it's it's comparable to home a but what i mean it's comparable but home a still took the cake so, all right, boom, we go ahead, like, all right, let's go ahead on home A um, and home B. So, I was like, let's just go in there, just boom, put an offer on both of those joints to see what happens. Because at this point in the game, I know just because you put an offer in doesn't mean it's going to go your way. So, putting multiple offers in won't hurt, essentially. And so, we go ahead and I think before, I think my realtor even submits the offer, Again, I said, you know, there's this due diligence that we do now. So he calls the realtors of both homes. He calls the realtor of home A first. 
Rosa tell him's up. Somebody put it off her and the owner grabbed it up. They're already out of freaking, excuse me. They already are out of, what do you call that? Um, oh, what is it called? Well, I'm going, I'm, I'm in a blank. Attorney review. And which happened hella fast because it's only a day <laughs> later, right? But sometimes it can happen that way, right? When someone wants to really sell, especially if it's an investor, sometimes they don't want to have the property standing there because, again, they'll be losing money or they just want to sell it and move on. So they were really on it, on it. So, boom. Okay, fine. So only option now is home B. All right, same thing. He calls the realtor, starts talking to the realtor. Hey, this home is not worth this. You know, my uh, my client is interested. What's the deal? Yeah, realtor understands the home is not is not worth that the owner is a investor and the realtor is like you know what if you want to talk to the owner cool 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 so my realtor talked to the owner owner is quote unquote confident that the house would appraise for that amount but willing to negotiate if it doesn't oh okay cool 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 like no sweat no problem awesome offer in do the whole shebang and we're in attorney review. And so, like, on my end, we submit what we need to submit. Cool. And we're waiting. And we wait. So, attorney review can be anywhere from three days to whatever, I guess, you agree to. So, it's we our timeline was three days. So, it's literally the third day. And that's when we finally hear back from the seller's attorney. And guess what? Uh-huh. They on some bullshit. So, it's like, bruh. <laughs> Oh my God. Like what I'm noticing is a lot of these homes are being renovated by, bought and renovated by investors. What I'm also noticing about that is that these mother mofos, <laughs> they are really greedy people and entities, whatever you want to call them. And they really, it's really about the bottom line, really about the buck. They're literally buying these homes for like 50K, 100K, 200K at most. They throw in 100K to, for renovations. I, I really highly doubt 150, max 200K. But yet you want to charge triple that. What is wrong with you? But like, I understand wanting a profit, but getting 100 back on your 100% back on your return, that's amazing. So why do you need to exceed that? Like why does it need to be 200 back? 200% back, 300% back. Like and that's the frustrating part about it, you know what I mean? And like they operate as if it's not people buying the homes because they're essentially our entities buying it renovating and they're selling it and they're selling it to people they're not selling to other investors but they're operating as if they are so they're operating as if they're selling it to to people who have 100 200k laying around and they can just slap it down if that was the case i would build a home from the ground the fuck up like i don't understand um but it's frustrating and yeah like to kind of get you even if like i'm not a person who gets like hopes up 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 however i am hopeful right and it's like all right you know let's do this let's hope it works out for the best if it doesn't it doesn't but you're still disappointed when it doesn't work out you know and it's draining going out looking at homes is draining that process okay you find the home and you gotta like there's a process that goes you know before you even put your offer in and then when the offer goes in and it's like that process is draining and this is before you even move in before you get the house and this and then your mind is also racing about okay if i do get this now you got to plan out moving you got to plan out buying furniture like it's just so many things and your brain is going this way that way up and down and it's it's a lot and it's beyond <laughs> frustrating <laughs> and um i'm a little bit over it and i'm trying to for me before i get to a place where i'm just like fuck out of here like i'm completely done with it I want to pause, take a step back to reevaluate. So that's the place that I'm in right now. I'm like, I need to re-strategize. I need to either look at a different area or downsize, you know what I mean? Like kind of scale down what it is I'm looking for or even wait a little bit longer. Something like I need to figure out what is going to help me stay in the game and get what I want 
but I haven't figured out what that is just yet Um, because time you know time does play a factor you know plays a factor on the interest rates it plays on a factor on um, your pre-qualification running out so it's like all these things there's there's there's, there are timelines to these things so you don't have a lot of time to sit and twiddle your thumbs or sit and think and so I'm at that space with like I need to focus I need to rethink what is happening why it's happening what can be done different even though I really know there's a big portion of it that's not in my control I do want to look at the parts that I can control and how I can reduce my stress or reduce whatever it is I'm feeling about the process and that's kind of where I'm at I wish I had better news for you all but I don't um and it's the reality of the situation you know some people can go out there and they find their homes really quickly and then some people it takes months like my the person who does my brows like he said him and his wife were looking for a home for eight months straight he said every sunday they were out looking for a house looking for a home eight months straight yeah i think i beat him but at the same time i think i mean i've been looking kind of going through the process for three years but not actively looking as much I think since last year till now, it's six, it's going to be six months. So I'm running up on him soon. You know, like I'm running up on that timeline real, real soon. But that's just, that's it. That's the update right there. Really trying to figure out what the next steps are. Trying to figure out how can I approach this differently. If anyone is listening and they have any advice, please, (laughs) like, please. I am all ears. I would definitely take it. I definitely want to not throw in the towel. But if that's something I have to do for the moment, I will. But it's not something I want to do. It's a have to, not a want to. So that's that. That's the update. So again, the saga continues. I hope the next time I am having a home buying uh, episode, it's really about, okay, y'all, You know what? We're going forward. This is what's happening. I can give y'all a closing date. Like, I hope that's how it happens. But if not, that's how the cookie crumbles. For today's Connection Corner, I share with you a post from someone on IG that I follow. Well, a group called Black Hustlers Club. And it reads, The best thing about life is that everything I've ever lost has been replaced with something better. I never lack, I just transition. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of the Oasis Podcast. I hope you were able to find something that resonated with you on your journey. Don't forget to subscribe, share this episode, and like us on Instagram at the Oasis Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, direct message us on Instagram or email us at ajsoasis at gmail.com. Again, that's A-A-Y-J-A-Y-S-O-A-S-I-S at gmail.com.